Hey guys, what is going on? I am back with another video. Once again, a beginner's guide to your DSLR and shooting. So last week we talked about shutter speed. Uh, you can check that out in the top left corner over here. Um, but this week we're going to be talking about frame rate. Frame rate is mainly for people who are more interested in video. So if you're a photo person, you can click off if you'd like, but please don't because I really need the views. <laughs> when recording a video, there's a lot of different frame rates that we can shoot in. Um, frame rate, also known as frames per second or FPS, refers to the number of frames per second, right? Makes sense, the rate at which a frame occurs within one second. If you are a gamer, then you should know a little bit about FPS, you know, 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 60 frames a second. But if you're a PC gamer, you should know 60 frames a second because that's what every PC gamer always loves to brag about, including myself. <laughs> anyway, it's basically the number of frames taken in one second. Imagine you're taking like a bunch of pictures and then that's the number that you take in one second. There's two different types of frame rates. Mainly there's progressive and then there's interlaced. Uh, most things nowadays are going to be progressive, hence why you see things like 1080p, 720p, you know, all that stuff. The P actually stands for progressive, whereas it used to be 1080i, which was 1080 interlaced. To give a really like basic version of it, progressive is basically if you take a picture, you have that one picture, that's one frame, right? But interlaced is where you take a picture and then you take another picture and you take another picture, but then picture A and then picture B blend together and then the frame between those two is picture A, B. Yeah, it's a little confusing in that sense and that's actually, honestly, an entirely different video, the differences between progressive and interlace, but don't worry about that, we're just gonna be focusing primarily on progressive. So the most common forms of frame rates are 24 frames, or 23.98, um, 30 frames, 29.97, uh, 60 frames, 59.94, and then 120, which I believe is something like 119.98, something like that. There's minor differences between the two different sets, but, but we're just gonna focus on the main thing of just like 24 frames. Like, well, for this video, we'll just take 23.9497 and we'll just say 24 frames. Just make sure that when you start a project um, that your intended frame rate that you're shooting with is also your intended frame rate that you are editing your video with. So if you're shooting um, 24 frames, make sure that your project file is 24 frames. And for these different frame rates, just imagine it's taking 24 pictures within one second, 30 pictures within one second, 60 pictures within one second, or 120 pictures within one second. There is also 25 and 50 frames if you live in, for example, the UK, but we're just gonna be focusing on the US and Canada here, guys. So now imagine you're taking videos. Uh, you've got 24 pictures in one second, so 24 frames per second, versus 120 pictures in one second. 120 FPS. The higher frame rate means you'll be able to capture images and motion more clearly than if you had the lower frame rate, but it takes up more space on your SD card compared to the lower frame rate. However, as discussed in the previous video, frame rate and shutter speed go hand in hand. If you have a higher frame rate, you're gonna have to compensate by setting the shutter speed twice as high in order to create an effective regular normal motion blur. But the higher shutter speed and higher frame rate mean that the image that you're gonna get is gonna be darker. So you're gonna need more lights to be able to shoot something or boost the ISO in your camera. So this is why you don't always wanna shoot in something like 60 frames or 120 frames, just because you're gonna need way more lights or digital noise from ISO. Higher frame rates, however, become very, very useful if you wanna do slow-mo. I'll do an in-depth discussion about slow motion video in another video, but I'll go over the basics. If you want really good, effective slow motion, make sure that the project that you are editing in is actually 24 frames and that the video you are shooting in is 120 frames. The 24 frames isn't a hard rule per se, but it's very, very useful if you're trying to do good slow motion and you're shooting in 120 frames. If you're shooting at 120 frames and you want to slow it down, 24 goes into 120 five times. Basic math. If you shoot 120 frames for your slow-mo shot and you want to take it into a project that's 24 frames, you could slow it down 
five times because 120 divided by five is 24. You can take a clip that's one second long at 120 frames, put it into a project that's 24 frames per second, and stretch it out across five seconds as opposed to just one second. Whereas if you shot 120 frames and then brought it into a project where you shot the rest in like 60 frames a second, then you can only slow it down two times. As compared to slowing it down five times, I would really personally go for slowing it down five times because it looks way better than just slowing it down two times. PC gamers love having 60 frames a second, at least compared to 24 frames a second. That's what they talk about all the time. But there's a reason for this. The 60 frames a second allow for a much faster reaction time than 24 frames because it refreshes 60 times within one second as compared to 24 times in one second. So you get better reaction time. And in video games, you know, reaction time makes all the difference. I mean, it doesn't have too much to do with video recording like this, but I figured I should at least mention it because it's related. Now, let me show you various examples of different frame rates. Take into account that the shutter speed will be twice the frame rate and the ISO will be consistent throughout. This is 24 frames a second at 1 50th of shutter speed at 1250 ISO. Everything looks relatively normal. This is what you've been watching. But now let's go to this. This is 30 frames a second at 1 60th shutter speed at the same ISO as before, 1250. You might notice it's a little bit darker this time. Now this is 60 frames a second at 125 shutter speed. The reason it's 125 is because we don't have 120 on this particular camera. And once again, the ISO is the same. It's at 1250 and you're noticing that it's significantly darker. Now this is 120 frames a second at 250th shutter speed and the same lighting as before. I haven't touched the ISO, but you'll also notice that because I'm shooting in slow-mo, everything's really cropped in. I haven't touched the lens. So when you shoot on slow-mo, some cameras actually have to crop in in order to compensate. So that's why this frame is tighter. So you're gonna have to like back up a little bit in order to effectively get the shot that you want. Now that everything's back to normal, let me explain why you should choose a particular frame rate. 24 frames are what a lot of movies are kind of shot with. Um, 30 frames works just as well, but um, I tend to shoot 24 frames because I have that option of if I ever shoot slow-mo, I can bring it in and slow it down five times. 60 frames works really well for if you are gaming or if you are using like a GoPro and recording sports because you get all that action just so smooth. You can kind of see everything that's going on and there's not that much motion blur. And if you want to do slow-mo, just do 120 frames or 250 frames depending on what your camera is able to do. There's also so much history regarding frame rates like back in the day when cameras were first created and then motion pictures started coming. But that's all stuff for another day, another video. I don't know if you guys are interested in that, but if you are, leave a comment down below and let me know if you're interested in like the history of frame rates and stuff like that. And I'll do my best to explain it to you guys. Anyway, that's it for frame rate. The next video I am planning on doing is actually aperture and how that affects your photos and videos backgrounds, bokeh, all that sort of stuff. Um, so stay tuned for that. Like the video, if you like the video, leave a comment down below. Um, if you have a question, you know, if you like the video, just say, hey, you know what, I like the video. You should keep doing more of this. Um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and I will catch you guys in the next video.